Well, welcome to On the Record. I'm Suzanne Alexander, and joining us here on our Music Row studios, it is so great to have Tennille Arts with us. So great to see you. You look beautiful, gorgeous. <laughs> Thank you. And everybody always asks if this is clothing that you made because you're so crafty <laughs> online. This is not. You said you I didn't make these, but I do make a lot of my own clothing, yeah. <laughs> you, you have time. There's no time. You have to be on the road. You no. have to be singing. You have to be songwriting. Yeah. Yeah. Unless I'm on the bus for a while, then I have got some time, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, a lot of people, of course, um, know you from your song, Somebody Like That. And I was going to say, you know, this is a girl, several albums into your career, multiple award winner, just recently nominated for Entertainer of the Year at the Canadian Country Music Awards. Mm -hmm. And boy, that says a lot because you remember back, you know, when you were just starting out and getting that Rising Star Award yeah. and boom, things have just taken off. I want to talk about the single. This is a a million selling song. Did you know somebody like that when you were writing it that you had an inkling? Because sometimes people say, I have a gut feeling about this song. I would say like when we were writing it, no. I knew that I really liked it. But then when I got the demo back, I was driving in the car and I was like, I think this is my single. I mm. think this is the one. And it took us two writing sessions to write the song actually. We, we did a lot of editing and just trying to make sure that it was perfect. I've seen pickup lines and dive bars, strangers slow dance. I've seen happy hour two for ones turn to one night. It, it turned out great, and obviously now we get to have that as, you know, something that we did together forever. So. Right. And, and, and a lot of people may not know at home that working with Alex Klein, who's a, a producer and songwriter in town, and she's amazing, and then Allison Belts, of course, just an amazing writer, and of mm -hmm. course with yourself, this really was very rare to have an all-female team. Were you aware of that at the time? Were you guys just kind of doing your thing and like, hey, this took off and look at this? <laughs> I mean, I just love writing with women, to be totally mm -hmm. honest. I just, I think we come, growing up listening to 90s country, I feel like we all know what women want to hear. Right. And like, we want to talk about the real stuff. We want to, this was a song that we wrote after I went through a, a big breakup and, um, I had written all of the sad songs and I was like, you know what, I want to write something hopeful about looking for love and, you know, Allison, her, her, well, her lyrics, obviously, but her melodies are just unlike anything else in this town. And then you've got Alex who, I mean, she questions everything. We're going through everything over and over and over again. And then she's producing and I'm singing and Allison is doing background vocals. Mm -hmm. Like we're just kind of this little team that... I love so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's great when you find your tribe, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. Well, I'd love for you to sing the song for us. Can Absolutely. you do it? Let's, Let's go do ahead it. and hear it. We're talking about Tennille Arts. And here it is, Somebody Like That. Ladies and gentlemen, take a listen. I've seen pickup lines and dive bar strangers slow dance. I've seen happy hour two for once turn to one night stands. I've seen neon rebounds and late night drunk dials. I've seen that Cinderella fairy tale go up in cigarette smoke. I've seen two hearts bet it all and still end up broke. The real thing won't be. Yeah, it might take a while, but I want that all in falling. Keep the fire burning like the first time. Feel it no matter what. If I'm gonna love, I'm gonna love somebody like that kind of heart. Open arms, it's forever, ever, never, ever take it back. If I'm gonna Mama walking down the living room stairs. Daddy saying with a smile, that's my girl right there. They've had their share of ups and downs. And I saw the best and the worst and the work and the worth it to get to that.
so much passion there and I have to say there is a joy that comes across through you that I've noticed throughout your music and and even throughout your socials you have a joy this this love of life where does that come from is that from and how you grew up is that from your parents was that always there I mean uh some of it <laughs> I just I mean I love music I love singing I love getting to do this for a living I mean who gets to say that they get to do this for a living. I just mm. love it so much. Um, every bit of me loves it. Um, and I love getting to see my parents like get excited about me doing the things that we dreamed about me mm. doing, yeah. you know? And even my siblings too. It's like, they were always annoyed when I was singing in the house all the time, but now, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're coming out to my shows and I only get to see them every once in a while, but it's, it's just, it's so exciting to me. Yeah. Everything is exciting. You're, there's a line in the song too where it says the work and it was worth it and I wonder where did that come from was that because how long have your parents been married and is it I don't and even grandparents know how many as well um, and, my grandparents were married for 65 years so a long and, line of love yes and I, yeah I mean I just got to see the I like to see couples like fight it out mm -hmm. figure it out not be quiet about what they're going through and and I think the more we talk about those things just like mental health and all of these other things, it's like we realize no relationship is perfect. Right. <laughs> yeah. No relationship is perfect. <laughs> I don't care if it's your friends, your parents, or you know, your siblings, your significant other, whoever it is. It's like we're all going through things, and we need to just talk. Mm -hmm. The easiest way to get through all of those things is to talk about it. And as a songwriter, write about them <laughs> as yeah. well. Stay I with do us. write about it. <laughs> A lot more with Tennille Arts when we come back. Stay with us here on The Record. Welcome back to On The Record, spending time with Tennille Arts in our studios and watching that, of course. It, it kind of makes me think of the young girl from Canada that came to Nashville, a little back home right yeah. now. <laughs> and what, you know, what that moment was like. But I want to get a little background for people who may not know. You're a Canadian artist, of course, hail from Saskatchewan. Mm -hmm. What was it like growing up? Was it Weyburn? Is that, was that your Weyburn, town? Weyburn, Saskatchewan. What yeah. was it like? I know the uh, Canadian Pacific Railroad goes through yeah, there. So it big does. Ag, ag community area. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just grew up very, very basic, you know, kind of a smaller house. And my, my dad has a wheat farm, wheat, not wheat, um, <laughs> <laughs> a wheat farm. And um, yeah, I mean, we just grew up really, really simple and loving country music. That was all that was really on the radio, so. Talk about the moment where you realized, you know, I've heard different stories about, oh, wait a sec, you can sing, <laughs> we should pursue this. I heard you were in the backyard singing a Shania Twain song and somebody said, hey, you called up your mom and yeah. said, you need to pursue this. <laughs> My neighbor, um, we're still super close with them. They, they just moved away, which was so sad for all of us because we just love them so much, but. Uh -huh. um, yeah, I mean, I was always singing. You know, my siblings were telling me to shut up, but I, <laughs> I was singing in my backyard that particular day, and my neighbor overheard me and was like, you know, I think she has a great voice. Mm. She literally came over to our front door and was like, I just heard her singing, and I think you should maybe pursue this. And thankfully, my mom 
She was like, yeah. How Let's old were you then? I was eight. Eight years old. So talk about making the move to Nashville. I know you had kind of come to Nashville and, and first discovered, was it through being online on YouTube? YouTube. Performance? And, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I came to Nashville when I was um, 14 or 15 for the first time. And it was, yeah, someone heard me singing on YouTube. I was singing a, a Taylor Swift song, 15, mm. when I was 15. <laughs> uh, and they asked me to come to Nashville and be a part of this duo and, and all of that. And I mean, we got signed and all of that was great and, and fun and what you think, you know, being an artist would be like, but uh, the music just wasn't what I wanted mm -hmm. for it myself. Weird. It was it wasn't me. And so I decided to go back to Canada and finish high school and then try to get back here somehow. <laughs> so after high school, you come back. Were your parents like, I mean, I can't imagine being your parents and going, OK, did you know people here? And I knew like three people here. That had um, to be scary. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was also the first time I, I had all of my friends went to college and university and all of that and were living on their own and doing all of the, that kind that of world, stuff. And yeah. I was living at home trying to save up to get here. So it was definitely it was my first time being on my own, like actually on my own in my own apartment, doing my own grocery shopping, that kind of Did thing. Did you already have the record deal? Um, um, I had yeah. a publishing deal. Publishing yeah, deal. Yeah. So um, that was in place. So I at least had some type of income and mm. knew that I could survive on my own. <laughs> but there were times where my mom would come to visit and she would like tuck some money under my pillow Aww. and <laughs> message me after she left because it was, I mean, it's tough, it's tough to come here and try to be an artist and yeah. Yeah. I love how you said that. You were doing your own grocery shopping. You had to cook. You have to do your own laundry. Yeah. I mean, those are things that people don't think about in addition to really kind of getting yourself into the music circle that was going on yeah. here. And, and I'm sure co-writing was a, a big thing and that was probably also very new. Well, I had been co-writing since I was 15, but it was definitely trying to find my own voice in that because mm. I was kind of one of those co-writers that would sit back and didn't really know what I wanted to say. But then I figured it out and started like sharing my side of things and talking more about my life. And that's when I feel like I started to write good songs. Kickball in the cul-de-sac back when the fireflies were curfew. Flip that last solo cup, senior year, house party buzz, class of 2000, whatever. In the Stay with us. We're going to have a lot more coming up with Tinniel Arts. There is a new song that I want to talk about, teaming up with one of your heroes by the name of Miss Leanne Rhymes. Stay with us. Welcome back to On The Record. We're coming to you from our Music Row studios here in Nashville, Tennessee, hanging out with Tim Neal Arts. And before the break, we were talking about kind of really coming into your own and finding your voice in, in music and who you wanted to be as an artist. And I always like to hear that, that moment that really kind of locked in your record deal when you were in town because you had the publishing deal, but it kind of all just kind of folded into itself. Is yeah, that the way? <laughs> I yeah. mean, it kind of turned into a record deal, um, but I actually... Uh, now and with my management team, they started a label for me. So uh -huh. now we're we're all kind of intertwined, and it's it's amazing because they are just the most incredible people, and they take care of me in a lot of different ways: physical, mental health, all of the things. Mm. They're just the best people ever. So I'm in a very unusual but incredible position right now. I think for everybody at home, when we talk about um, an artist and their career, you can kind of be out there and who do you trust and which way do you mm -hmm. go? So to have a supportive team and a foundation is so, so important. And I'm so glad that you've got that. Thank you. I do want to talk about the fact that one of the best voices in music and, and you're just brilliant. You have been singing since a little girl. One of those songs that was a highlight for you was a song by Leanne Rhymes called Blue. Mm -hmm. And I know there's a sentimental attachment to that song because of your grandfather, and it was one of his favorites. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to try not to cry. Um, mm. Yeah, it was one of the first songs he ever heard me sing, and he loved it. And um, yeah, it was like one of those moments. He thought that it was the radio playing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh and it was me singing. And so that was kind of one of those moments where I was like, this is really cool. And I would always sing it for him. 
every single time he was at a show. So, sorry. Um, no, and I love that. And it's, it means so much to you yeah. to get the opportunity then to sing it with Leanne Rimes. Yeah. I mean, and, and what would your grandfather have said? Oh, I mean, I know he was there. Like, we got to, I, I've played it on the Opry a few times just by myself. And then um, the other day, Leanne was in town and she was like, you know, come say hi. I'm playing the Ryman. Would love to just say hi, basically. And she asked me how long I could stay. And I said, well, I've got to go after like four or five songs. And she was like, well, if you can stay until the third song, will you sing Blue with me? Oh, <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, I know my grandpa's always watching every show that I ever do. But that was probably the most special thing. Like, I probably cried four times oh, that night. Just a full circle moment, really. It was, honestly, yeah. that's what it was. It was just looking back on where, where I started and then to have that person that you idolize so much ask you to sing with them. That was and really that says cool. a lot about you <laughs> and who you are and your talent. Jealous of Myself is a new song, back with one of your heroes, Leanne Rimes, on this. And this was a song that you found and connected with Leanne on, right? You kind of, somebody, did you have the idea or somebody suggest, hey, why don't you guys do this as a duet? Yeah, I mean, well, how I, I originally found the song, I mean, I usually write everything that I put out. And this was a song that I actually came across on TikTok. One of my favorite write writers, Emily Wiseman, had posted the song and I was just, like, she outwrote me. <laughs> it was incredible. And I really wanted the song, and she was just like, who wants to sing it? And so I reached out and wanted the song, and then uh, my manager reached out to Leanne's team and was like, this is Tennille's new single, and she loved it, and want Leanne wanted to sing on it. Mm. <laughs> I just thought that was crazy. You guys I mean, sound amazing. I am so excited to have her on it. So on this upcoming album, there is going to be a version, the solo version, and then there is going to be the duet version of the two of you. And I would love for you to sing that song chorus Absolutely. now. Can you do it? Yes. Everybody, Tennille Arts, of course, the song is Jealous of Myself. It's going to be found on her upcoming album. So look for that. Here she is. Listen. All right. She's a little bit younger, call her baby, drives me crazy, cause that used to be me. She knows all of your secrets, and your dive bars, and your back roads, you drive when you need to think. She gets to call your mama, talk about you, say she'll see her soon. She gets to do all the things I thought I'd always do Ain't a day that I don't wish that I could be her The way you hold her like you're never gonna leave her How they love her in your hometown too I'm jealous, I can't help it, I want Every second that your hands are on her body How you put her name in every prayer to God she has it so good, but she has no clue. I'm jealous of myself when I have you. Gotta look at the pictures of you with her on my mirror, cause I still ain't took them down. And still got the t shirt that you bought her at a concert. Now the tour dates are faded out. She gets to know your number, never wonder who's been on your mind. She gets to keep you up at night, and it's keeping me up tonight. Ain't a day that I don't wish that I could be her, the way you hold her like you're never gonna leave her. How they love her in your hometown too. I'm jealous, I can't help it, I've won. Every second that your hands are on her body How you put her name in every prayer to God She has it so good, but she has no clue I'm jealous of myself when I have you Ooh, You 
shattered when you leave her Hasn't had to see you with somebody new I'm jealous, I can't help it I want every second that your hands are on her body How you put her name in every pretty guy She has it so good, but she has no clue I'm jealous of myself I'm jealous of myself I don't even know how to say or come back in after that. The regret and just the growth. I, it's interesting because I feel like with the last album, Girl to Girl, it was so much about empowerment, empowerment that is, really kind of telling young girls at home, hey, you know, it's okay, be yourself. Don't compare yourself. Yeah. And I feel like with every artist, with every album, you are, you know, of course, evolving. With that song, I feel like this is now adult <laughs> yeah. to Neil Arts. And talk about the rest of this album. Is this a, a different a different woman, a different artist that we're seeing today? I mean, definitely. I feel like people that I've shared the music with say it feels more mature, mm. more like a woman, um, which is what I grew up loving. You know, the 90s country was was women, talking to women. And that's what I'm trying to do with this record. And I definitely touch on a few topics that nobody really touches on for some reason. So there's, there's that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm really proud of it. And it's the most exciting thing that I've ever done. I'm very excited. Yeah. The album's coming out this year. It is. Plans yeah. throughout the rest of the year touring in support of the new record? Or are you just going to kind of be buckled down and making sure everything's good to go? Uh, I'm still in the studio. I've written the entire record. I'm still in the studio, but um, recording it. But yeah, the, I mean, the rest of the summer is going to be trying out some of the new songs on festival stages and things like that. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it because that's the best way to know if people like your music <laughs> is to play it live. And if they talk about it afterwards, you know, you, know, you got something good. <laughs> uh, you're going to hear a pin drop when you do that song, Jealous of Myself. It is so incredible. What a voice you have. And I'm so grateful to have you in the studio. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time. We look forward to the new music. And thank you guys at home, of course, for watching On the Record. This is Suzanne Alexander along with Tennille Arts. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.